In the early days walking into Tampa General, it was a little surreal, quite frankly. It was a little scary. It was a little nerve wracking. It was like, wow, I mean, we are in a major situation. As epidemiologists, you train for pandemics, but to actually live it, my God, it's, I don't even have words to describe it anymore. You try to remain cautiously optimistic, but when you see the, the numbers, it was very apocalyptic. People were terrified. I need a minute, because so I've never really kind of reflected on this before today. I had a lot of people come to me you know, really scared, scared for their livelihoods, scared for their families, scared for themselves. Are we going to survive? Well, very early on, the answer was, I don't know. My wife is in a wheelchair with lung disease, and I dreaded taking it home to her. I was thinking about my son who was four years old. You know, is it a possibility mommy won't be there for him? We have seen people die, young people die. So I, I worried for him a lot more, I, I would say. It was very much the operational part of my brain that was working and not the emotional part. And I think part of what I discounted was the um, emotional toll on my family. And so that was, that was a little bit, a little bit hard. To watch the team be scared for themselves and their families, but yet jump in there at the drop of a hat, no questions asked and do this kind of work will forever be engraved in my heart. There aren't a lot of people who want to work with these patients because they're scared, but they need people to work with them and provide care for them that care about them. I told them ahead of time, we don't know what this is. It's dangerous and you might die. Everyone stood up and said, count me in. No one asked you to take on that, that stress or that burden. But when you're in that position, you clean. You have to make sure that there is no trace of COVID in that room. It could be life or death. I think what we've done here has been absolutely amazing. It's been a lot of love that we've brought to these patients, some of whom couldn't see their family members before they died. And yet we had nurses. And they're holding their hands. And, and perhaps the last human being speaking to them before they passed away. These patients, like, they look at you and they're so scared because they can't breathe and they're telling you that they, they, they're scared and you try to tell them it's gonna be okay and you know it's really not gonna be okay. My first patient death was a COVID patient. And I'll never forget her. But I think about it every day. Anyone who says that they haven't at least had one moment over this year, that they haven't had to have an ugly cry, like I, I'm gonna find that hard to believe. It's been one hell of a year. I mean, there's a lot of people in this organization that have literally worked for a year without any breaks. Looking back at COVID now for the last year, it really feels like the longest, slowest mass casualty event that I've experienced. This is history. And it's so crazy to think that I'm working with history because <laughs> I just never thought that, that would happen in my career. At Tampa General and USF, we have a team of people that are really committed to changing the world one patient at a time. We have witnessed something the world has never witnessed before, but we've also learned from it. And I wanna, if anything, take the lessons we have learned so the future is better protected. I'm really proud of my team. They really had the courage to care for these patients when other people were too scared and frightened. I think the biggest part of it has been seeing some of the most courageous souls around you come together and truly make it all happen. The team, the leadership, just seeing everybody work towards that one common fight. They are brave, they are compassionate, and they are just absolutely amazing human beings. 
One of the most frustrating parts, moments of COVID for me, there was an opportunity for me to say, I love you guys to the team. And I didn't. Um, and I wish I had. I can say it now. Um, so proud, so grateful. I would see ventilators and machinery and pumps and leads and lines. And I would think, you know, all of this technology and infrastructure is needed for the obvious reasons, right? But it's the people that make it come alive. And then to see them sacrifice the way they did, I mean, it's humbling. Warriors. Warriors. Nurses have never had to nurse this way in the history of nursing. It's something that I'm definitely gonna carry with me throughout the rest of my career. You know, I think as I look back, it's also probably the, the year where I've uh, learned the most as a physician. COVID-19 has made us think very differently about how we care for those with infectious disease. So we will be conducting cutting edge research through the Global Emerging Diseases Institute, which is a collaboration between Tampa General Hospital, USF Health, Masani College of Medicine. We will be prepared, we are retooling, and we will be ready. It's amazing. This team is amazing. Spring is here, vaccines are rolling out. We're in the fourth quarter. It's a great analogy, football in the box and Tom Brady. He does not give up until the final whistle is blown and the game is won. We are in the fourth quarter. There's five minutes left and we haven't won yet. We are gonna win, but we have to stay vigilant. And that's exactly what we're doing. We got this and we're going to be victorious.